Hey, what's going on? The Chris here from Mixdown Online. And today I'm going to answer a question coming from Jeremy, who is asking, Excellent as always, Chris, but what is clip gain? I didn't know you could somehow turn up the gain of a quiet part without moving a fader. Could you possibly show us a little more details on the subject? Thanks again. So yes, in today's video, I'm going to answer that question by showing you the difference between clip gain and a channel fader. So now before we jump in, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe and to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like this video. Okay, so now let's jump in Cubase. Now the concept of clip gain is found in Cubase, but also in Pro Tools and other DAWs. Okay, so this is something uh, that is quite common um, in a lot of uh, in a lot of digital audio workstations. So the concept is very simple when we're talking about pre-gain or clip gain, we're talking about affecting the amount of gain of an event, an audio event, or a channel before the signal hits the inserts, uh, the sends, and the channel's fader. So that is the main difference. So I'm going to just give you practical examples uh, so you can, uh, you, you can manage to understand better the differences between clip gain and the fader, the channel fader. So first, when I talk about a clip gain, I'm talking about some audio that was recorded in uh, on this track. Every time I record any, uh, some audio on the track, it's going to create a uh, an event, an audio event. And I can I can have several events on the same track, or I can have only one event. It depends how many uh, how many times I recorded on that same track. Uh, now, in this example, I have several events here that were copy pasted, uh, another one that was recorded, and also a third one here um, that was recorded. Um, so basically we have a total of uh, six events. Okay, so let's say I want to um, match the gain of the last event with the rest of the events on that same channel. This is where I'm going to reach for clip gain. By selecting that event, the event I want to work on. And in Cubase, if you uh, click on that audio event, you go on the top center of that event, you'll have that small square icon that you can bring up or bring down. And this affects the amount of gain uh, we find on this audio event. So I'm going to bring it down so it matches um, the rest of the, uh, the gain that I, uh, that I have on the previous events. And this is something I like to do when I, um, I mix vocals or I just uh, record vocals. Uh, I will, you know, play with my, uh, with my clip gain on a few sections of the vocal. If I have one line, for example, that is way too loud compared to the other lines, um, now I can just sp split that event, that line into its own audio event and bring, bring down the clip gain. But when I mess around with clip gain, um, I have to make sure that my crossfades, uh, the transitions between all those events are smooth okay and to do so just to it's a side tip here um, when I do so like I did right here I'm gonna select the previous event with that uh, same event where I um, uh, brought down the clip gain and I'm just gonna click on X in Cubase so I have like that crossfade that is gonna smooth out the transition because I don't want to end up with some clicks and pops and stuff okay so this is a side tip uh, by doing crossfades between events um, that you clip gain basically so this is basically what clip gain is about. In Cubase, if I open the channel settings window of this track, I also have access to pre-gain, which is the same as clip gain, but for the entire track altogether. So this will bring down or up the gain of the channel itself, and the clip gain will bring up or down the gain of a specific audio event. Now, when we're talking about the channel fader, Okay, this comes, it's, it's again a volume, uh, it's a volume tool, okay, that you can bring up or down that will affect the volume of the channel itself. But that comes after the signal goes through the inserts and the sends, depending if you're pre or post fader, but this is for another video. Um, then 
it's the single will reach the uh, the fader and you will be able to bring down your volume the volume of that channel itself so when to use uh, the channel fader and when to use clip gain it depends what you have as insert plugins for example um, I brought down the gain of that event so it matches the rest of the event now this recording is a uh, is a clean um, electric guitar signal that was recorded um, as an insert plugin I have guitar rig which is an amp simulation a guitar amp simulation plugin so the amount of signal that comes into that plugin um, is going to affect the sound of the plugin. If I bring a high gain signal, I'm going to have way more distortion depending on the settings I have on that virtual amp. If I bring down one event very low, the sound is going to change. It's going to it's going to sound way less overdrived. Okay, if that is the setting of my virtual amp, um, and that is also the same with plugins like uh, other types of saturation plugins or compressors. Okay, uh, again, if you um, if you're in a situation where you just want to bring down one part of your signal, uh, you can choose to to do it via a clip gain. Um, but if you have like a bunch of compressors, let's say you're mixing a vocal, uh, and now uh, you love the tone of the vocal, you love how the compressor is reacting uh, to uh, to your vocal to the signal that comes into that compressor if you're working with clip gain if you bring down the gain of one specific event that event will sound different because the compressor is going to react differently to that event because the signal uh, coming into that compressor is lower compared to the other events that are found on the same channel in this case if I love the tone I'm not going to clip gain I'm going to use volume automation instead and uh, automate my channel fader because my channel fader will do the same job in a way uh, to bring down the volume of uh, that channel but after it hits the inserts so now the amount of signal coming in the compressors and the other plugins is not going to be affected because I'm playing with the amount of uh, the volume of the uh, the channel after the signal went through all the inserted plugins so that is the main difference. Now, in another situation, for example, uh, you're at the end of your mix and uh, you only have a EQ on your channel and you want to bring down one part, and let's say the bridge, the bridge that guitar needs to come down. You can use clip gain because your signal is only going through your, um, uh, your EQ and the amount of gain, if you reduce or increase the gain, the EQ is, is going to sound the same, okay? Because it's not a gain-based plugin. It's, it's a plugin that is going to work on frequencies. Okay, so uh, in that case, I would just, I could, I could use uh, clip gain or I can automate my uh, channels fader as well. It doesn't matter. Now it's up to you to decide which, uh, which way you want to go. But I tend to work with clip gain before I start my mix, especially for vocals. Um, and if I do afterwards, after the mix or at the end of my mix, uh, now it will depend on, uh, on how that, uh, that change is going to affect uh, what is inserted all the plugins that are inserted on my channel okay but most of the time I'm just gonna reach the channel fader so I hope that helps I hope that answers your question and that now you know the difference between clip gain or pre gain versus a channel fader so if you have any comments or question you can leave everything down below and again if you're new here on the channel subscribe click the notification bell and again guys if you loved this video share and like all right my friends so thanks for watching take care and i'm gonna see you next time <laughs>